Hey, welcome back class. So we want to continue our look at uh, propagating electromagnetic uh, waves. Uh, so we defined the current sheet. And we've also um, done a little bit of calculations using Maxwell equations and determine the magnetic field just on each side of the sheet. So now we want to see if we can continue this uh, by solving Maxwell's equation. So uh, let me just warn you, this is probably one of the more involved and mathematically involved and complicated lectures of this course. So just bear with me. I just want to show you how this works. There is an alternate way to do this and we'll look at that as well. So just bear with me. Uh, in light of that, uh, the inspirational thought for the day is Proverbs 14.4. Love this verse. It says, where there are no oxen, the manger is clean. But abundant crops come by the strength of the ox. And I think the, I think the wisdom here that's being expressed is that sometimes we have to get things dirty or mess things up in order to increase. You know, you can keep, keep a clean manger by getting rid of the ox and your manger will be clean forever. But without that ox, you're going to have a hard time bringing in some crops. So sometimes we have to live with cleaning up the mess in the, in the stables in order to get the increase that we're wanting later. And so I think that's pretty uh, pretty appropriate for especially today's lecture. We're, we're going to mess things up just a bit and, and get them messy. But I think you'll see, uh, maybe not by the end of this lecture, but by the next, in the next lecture or two, you know, the reason for that and that, hey, we are really getting some value from this, even though we, we were going down a messy path here. Again, continuing part four, wave propagations in free space, done the infinite plane current, done the magnetic field on each side. So now we're going to do uh, the successive solution to Maxwell's equations. <clears throat> so we've now defined, again, our, our current sheet. Uh, again, applied Maxwell's equations uh, for the special case uh, to start to look at this propagating electromagnetic wave. And so here are the equations that we've come up with. Uh, again, this is a very special case where we only have E in the X direction along the Z axis. And so this is going to correspond with a magnetic field in the Y direction that varies with time. And so these equations are very important and they will guide our steps for this in the next section. So we'll be referring back to them. So please make sure you understand what these, equa what these, equation means, what these equations mean. So again, this is saying that the uh, electric field is varying at, a, at the Z position as the magnetic field varies in time. And likewise, the magnetic field in the Y direction is varying in the Z, according to Z, or in reference to Z, as the current density, uh, displacement density, uh, displacement vector varies with time, which we should remember, hopefully, that the displacement vector is related to the electric field by the permittivity, and the magnetic field is related to the magnetic flux density by the permittivity. Per so permeability, excuse me. So permittivity this way, permeability this way. We're going to utilize that in a few slides here in a minute, so just remember and keep that in mind. So we also want to recall from our previous section that we used Ampere's law in integral form, remember that the magnetic field uh, summed up along some closed path that forms some surface in the middle. Remember the bubble scenario it has to equal to all the current and displacement current varying with time uh, normal to and penetrating that surface. So this would, if you hopefully recall, this gave us an expression for the magnetic field just to the left and right or in the negative Z and negative Z and positive Z direction. Uh, just on each side of that current sheet. So that's what these expressions are here. And again, we, we're going to use these expressions along with the forms of Maxwell's equations uh, before to extend this general solution. So once again, buckle up, be ready. It gets a little bit intense, at least mathematically from here. But again, just please try to bear with me. So to solve these simultaneous differential equations above, we can approach this problem in a couple of different ways. So the first approach is uh, we want to solve both equations successively, successively 
hopefully successfully, but successively and repeatedly in a step-by-step -step manner until we arrive at solutions that satisfy both equations. Remember, both equations have to be satisfied at the same time in order for the wave to propagate. So we want to do just a little bit of mathematical uh, manipulation here to make our task just a little bit easier. We're going to rewrite our expressions for the uh, electric field and the magnetic field, and we're going to do it in phasor form. So this will be the real part of EXZ to the EJ omega T. And you might remember from calculus, uh, I think it was Euler, uh, showed us that e to the j omega t could be rewritten as cosine omega t plus j m sine omega t. And so that's why we're only taking the real part to get that cosine part because we do have a, a sinusoidal wave here. <clears throat> Don't get too hung up on this. Uh, you can look at this later and try to figure that out if you, if you feel like you need to. But for the time being, let's just trust me and let's keep moving. So with this change in notation, we can now apply the differential dif differentiator property from Fourier analysis. Hopefully you've had some Fourier analysis and are familiar with this in the frequency domain. So this allows us to replace the uh, calculus differentiation with respect to time by just multiplying by j omega. That's just a property uh, in the Fourier domain. So we'll be working in that Fourier domain for now. And so when we do that, our partial with the, the electric field with respect to z can now just be written as minus j omega times the magnetic flux density. Remember this was this term time, uh, taking the derivative with respect to time, but, but since we're in the Fourier domain, we can just use this multiplier. Or remember, we can relate the flux density to the magnetic field intensity by this permeability term here. I mentioned that earlier. Likewise, we can rewrite our second equation uh, here, replacing this with the differentiator with respect to t by just multiplying by j omega. Uh, and again, these two guys are related, the, the displacement uh, vector and the electric field vector by the permittivity. So this is the permeability and this is the permittivity. And both those are, are characteristics of the medium that we will be propagating in. So this change in notation is now also applied to that solution we got for the magnetic field just outside the current sheet. And so when we do that, remember we had this J sub S zero or S naught over two cosine omega T. Well, we can just take the real part of this EJ omega T. Remember this is cosine omega T plus J sine omega T. And we just want that real part. And so uh, that, that, that notation applies. And again, since we're AB, we're just on just to the positive Z direction side of that current sheet. And so the solution then of this phasor at the current sheet when Z equals to zero uh, is just going to be uh, this magnitude of our sinusoid there. So we now want to use this definition as our starting point to solve the above, above equations. And again, just hang with me. Let's get started. Here we go. So we want to start this process by substituting our new expression for the magnetic field, which is this term here at z equals zero, uh, into our modified phasor version of Faraday's law of or Faraday's equation. So this is what we came up with. Remember, this was the derivative with respect to time, but we're in the Fourier domain. So now uh, we just, this, this is our new expression for that. And again, relating with permeability, these two are equal. So this now gives us uh, this equation where we've got this hy at z0. That's this term here. We're replacing with uh, this, this magnitude or amplitude here. So this gets us started. So this is our starting point. So to, we still have a derivative here, still a differential equation. So to remove the derivative operator, we now want to integrate both sides with respect to z, since we're differentiating with respect to z. So when we do that, of course, the left-hand side just gives us e to the x. But when we differentiate the right side, uh, this is just a constant in terms of z. So it just gives us as the z term, and we have to add uh, this constant of integration signified by the c with the line over the top. 
So keep in mind that C with the line over top is the constant, constant of integration, not the symbol for the Cincinnati Bearcats, even though it really looks like it. And I always think it is, and that's what I think of. <clears throat> so, but now, but we know now that at Z equals zero, um, this constant of integration must be equal to the E field, right? Because if we have Z equals zero, we put Z zero in for there, this whole term then should drop out. And so it just is the E field at Z equals zero. So we can replace that constant then by saying it's the E field evaluated at the point Z equals to zero. So that wasn't too bad, but now it gets a little bit crazy. So we can now use this expression for EX to substitute back into the other equation, Ampere's Law. Remember, we have to satisfy both of them at the same time, so we're going to kind of ping pong back and forth between those two differential equations, Faraday's Law and Ampere's Law. So here we had, remember that Ampere's Law said that this derivative with respect to Z was this displacement vector with respect to time, but we, in the Fourier domain, can change it to that. And these two, the displacement and the E field, are related by permittivity, so we can equate these two. So now we're going to take this expression for EX here and substitute that straight in. And so that's going to give us the following. Uh, again, we've got these. This is just uh, this expression after we do this substitution for this EX. So you can see we take this whole expression and put, plug it in for here, and we're going to factor out this J omega uh, A to naught. And so when we clean this up just a little bit, um, we come up with this new expression here. So copying that over, as before, we can again integrate both sides with respect to z. Again, the, it's still a differential equation because we have this partial derivative with respect to z, so we can integrate both sides with respect to z. And when we do, these, uh, it's going to basically just add a z term to both of these. So you can see we add this z here to this, and this z here becomes z squared. And then we have this uh, new constant of integration, but we already know what that's going to be. That's going to be our magnetic field. Uh, at the point z equals zero, just as we did before, so I kind of skipped a step there. Again, we can uh, rearrange some terms uh, and do some things, and, and we made one more substitution here. Uh, you notice because we evaluated this a couple of slides back and noted that it's just the amplitude of this uh, at z equals zero. So again, if you don't remember that, go a couple of slides back and you hopefully will recall that's where that came from. So now again, we're going to collect some terms. We take out a, a J sub SO over two from both terms, and this is what we're, we're left with. But we're not done yet. There's more, much, much more. In fact, there's infinitely more. As we continue to extend this approach, again, ping-ponging back and forth, remember taking the result of one and putting it back into the equation of the other of the two Faraday and Ampere's law for Maxwell equations, we'll start to notice that there's some patterns in these equations. And so we want to introduce some new variables that will hopefully simplify some of the notation. The math the same. And these new variables are this new term beta. And so we're just going to say beta is equal to omega times the square root of mu naught eta naught, or the permittability and permittivity in free space. And the second term we call eta, so this is eta naught, and this is equal to the permeability divided by the permittivity in free space. That's what the zero means, square root. And so these two terms are two terms that we start to see uh, quite a bit as we start to keep ping-ponging back and forth. So wherever we see these in, in the future, we'll put a beta. Wherever we see these, we'll put an eta naught. Uh, we're going to see later that these are not just arbitrary definitions, but we can relate these to physical meanings or, uh, later as far as what medium we're propagating in. So these will be uh, uh, properties or attributes of the medium we're in. So again, we want to continue this process, uh, and we're going to make use of these new definitions. And so as we do, uh, we can identify a repeatable sequence in the formulation of these equations below. So 
Here is what we start to see for our E field. Again, every time we keep ping-ponging back and forth, we continue to add another term, but as we noted, putting in these beta values and these Z values, um, we start to see this pattern going here. Likewise, on the magnetic field, we start to see this pattern as well. So uh, again, we're gonna make use of that. So now we have an, albeit infinite, series expression for the electric and magnetic fields. Uh, we now examine these equations and hopefully from your previous math courses, you can see a familiar series uh, that you can hopefully can recall from your past. And so that series is that we can define cosine of, we'll say beta z, uh, is equal to one minus beta c squared over two factorial, beta z to the fourth over four factorial, so on and so forth. And likewise, a uh, sine function can be written as an infinite series um, as so. So hopefully you recall this. If not, you can go back and look in your calculus book and, and get a refresher, but trust me, it's true. So we want to make use of these definitions. <clears throat> and when we do, this is going to greatly clean up our expressions and we can see we don't have to keep ping-ponging back and forth as we see this pattern. So the new forms of these expressions, if we utilize these trigonometric, trigonometric identities, are now for the E field. Uh, we're going to have the value of the electric field at z equals zero, which is where the current sheet is, times the cosine of beta z minus j, eta j naught over two sine uh, beta z. And the magnetic field then is, uh, again, using that definition for sine and cosine, we come up with this expression for the magnetic field. So now we can use these expressions to find the general expressions for the real fields by substituting uh, these guys back into our phasor definitions. Remember, we, we redefined using these phasors when we first started. So we can substitute this, this E bar here and this H bar here, which will hopefully which should help us out a good bit. So making use of those substitutions and cleaning up the math just a little bit. Uh, we come up with uh, general solutions now. So now our E field, in terms of position and time along the z-axis, we have cosine beta z times c cosine omega d plus d sine omega t. So this c and d are uh, arbitrary constants that we get uh, from some of the integration that goes on. We'll look at that in detail a little more later and come up with some evaluations for those. Uh, plus eta naught j naught over two sine beta z sine omega t. And then our magnetic field is similar. We have this one over eta naught uh, sine beta z, the same term, same c and d terms here. And so again, we're, we're gonna look at these, probably not the next time, but probably the time after that to evaluate what c and d are. They're just constants right now, arbitrary constants uh, that we're going to solve for. So where we've replaced this real part of this phasor uh, with this C sine omega t plus D cosine omega t, again, where C and D are these arbitrary constants. And um, we'll solve for those in our specific application later. Finally, we want to make use of some trigonometric identities now because we have a lot of cosines and sines in there. And we can actually rearrange some of these terms which gets us to what we consider the more standard form of this solution, uh, which for the E field is this. So you can see it's still a little messy, but there's reasons why we've rearranged it. We've got uh, terms that are now just in terms of the C terms and then just in terms of the D terms are just gonna help us solve for those in a bit. And then uh, it's likewise for the magnetic field, uh, again, C terms and D terms. Um, you'll also notice that there's a difference in the, uh, the beta z terms, minus, plus, minus, plus, and there's a physical meaning for that, which we'll talk about next slide or next uh, lecture or two as well. So these are the general uh, solutions for the um, Maxwell's equations uh, for a propagating wave with an infinite current sheet. So that was approach number one. 
it's over. So it was messy, but we got to the end of it. At least that's the end for now. But I will encourage you to let you know there is another better way. At least I think it's better, and I think you will too. So we'll look at that other way to solve these uh, exact same equations uh, next lecture.